Hello and welcome back to another episode of Battletech. My name is Saiken and today we're going to continue our beloved Swan Song campaign where we're trying to beat the game on the literal hardest difficulty settings with um, within career mode. The, we are in our solar sector 2, so the second solar system, and you can see that the entirety of our roster is out for good. That is a direct result of us trying to solo two, two and a half star or school missions with nothing but the starting lands. So today we're going to do a bit of cleanup, looking for another solar system, and then hopefully upgrading our mechs a bit. Firstly, let's upgrade gunnery wherever possible. Yeah. What can I do you for? Training complete. Luckily, most of our Mech warriors have gotten some experience under the belt now. We also got two million ready. Let's take a look in the mech bay. You can already see we are plenty busy just with repairing uh, everything. But we do have 23 days to wait until everybody is back for good. Might as well make that time count. Firstly, I want to rework the blackjack the two ac2s are not my type of uh, tea they are arguably some of the worst weapons in the entire game so i'll replace them with an lbx10 and as always ammunition in the legs so that when they explode no one else gets injured we still got a ton more room our firepower is at 155. That's not fantastic. It's good, much better than the 115 they, um, the mech starts with, but it is not fantastic yet. We on we have already filled up all of the energy hard points, but we got a couple of support points. So I'm wondering, our heat efficiency is okay, but not great either. I distinctly remember that we've oftentimes overheated so maybe i'm just improving the heat the other alternative could be to put in two mgs and really use him as a brawler at the moment i think i'll go for the extra added heat sink that'll give us a net heat difference of minus 10 but since almost all of the weapons continue to be up every single round, I would argue that's not too bad. In terms of armor, we have already upgraded, maximized the armor. And with the exception of the back of the blackjack, we seem to be fine. And that's 14 days of work. So I think that's a good compromise. Vindicator is the second uh, target. I think overall the setup with the SRM-6 worked out well. Uh, decent mech now. The small lasers are doing their job. But we could basically upgrade, take the large laser out, put two more medium lasers in. We got enough medium lasers to do that now. So this would give us a net firepower of 188. That is already good. Not fantastic, but good. And I think we're almost at the maximum. One thing that we can change is putting another medium laser in here. Heat efficiency wise, that runs a hefty deficit. That runs a hefty deficit. So I'm wondering, we got a few more heat sinks. But we're still running at a deficit. Hmm. Are we going to buy another heat sink? Potentially. Surprisingly enough, the Vindicator actually did relatively well and did not overheat. So the one thing that we could try, since the lasers with their 6 heat, that's 12 heat, you can essentially deduct 12 heat. So we're actually at a relatively decent heat uh, ratio here 
So might as well go for another medium laser. And work with that. 10 days is not bad. We even got half a ton extra armor. That's good. Putting that up almost everywhere. I think that that's a good setup overall. We're running a moderate heat deficit. Again, the small lasers do not count. So we're looking at 66, so that's 12 heat deficit. I like to run between 15 and 20 for maximum alpha strikes, but still kind of versatility within the fight. And since he sinks 50 heat per round, that should actually be a really decent setup. And I think we filled all of uh, the hard points. Yeah, there's no further hard point left. So that's as much as you get out of uh, this uh, bad boy. We're almost at a 200 firepower. So the Vindicator and the Blackjack together can right. decently this, hold yeah. their own. So overall, we're looking at what? 24 days of repair work. Well, that's already all we got, right? So unfortunately for now, the other mechs need to wait. How long will it take to get here? 28 days. You know, normally it's four wasted days. But I think it's not too bad. We might as well use the four extra days just for some maintenance on the other mechs. Panther. Panther is doing reasonably well. Reasonably. If we were to refit it. Like that here is seven. Yeah, we wouldn't find. We w if we want to keep it as a sniper, we would find a much better loadout. The lasers would come in at ten. So you could run two heavy lasers. That's okay, I suppose. Not worth the effort. The Panther is okay. I would much rather go for the Vulcan and really work on that bad boy. So Let's take out the AC2 and see what we can deal with. Flamers also got to go. Two lasers. We're freeing up the jump jets for now. Because I think we'll need the space for something else. Ammunition goes into the legs as always imagine there could be another laser here hmm, 10 more tons what do we have as weapons that could work well Yeah, that's potentially not enough damage. UAC 10 would be interesting. That's kind of a double barrel uh, gun. It deals 120 damage. It has a long range. You can, you can reasonably set up a sniper with that. But I think we will not be able to put that into the Vul Vulcan. And the Vulcan just has a... Just the way that it is designed with the CQC suite that increases the support range damage. That would almost be wasteful to not use it. So we could load four lasers, four of the small lasers. Let's 
and then instead of the medium laser go for a larger laser that would be one option just makes armor for now and see how much room we really have left so we got four tons and the problem with most of the auto cannons is they are just too heavy for the chassis which means this hard point here is lamentable but really doesn't bring much to the table of uh, the of the actual mech firepower currently pretty low with another small laser we could improve that we could use it as a as a similar mech to the fire starter essentially like jumping in jumping out with the jump jets let's just re rewind that So far, so good. That would work. Good. The question of the day is, do we need a, do we continue with MGs here or are we just using lasers? That's 20 damage. It's 15 damage. We already got a massive heated advantage so potentially what we would need to do is we would need to buy two more lasers more lasers that is new weapon systems available all right fantastic Good. Upgrade the armor. And we could now go for a heavier laser. That definitely would be an option. Like going for a large laser instead of a medium one. That gives it some agency on longer range. In terms of firepower, not fantastic. It would be one of those makes. It's just trying to jump behind an enemy in order to deal enough damage or or you could uh, upgrade melee but we don't have that available with a with a nice melee attack you could uh, all of the support weapons would be issued but then again you don't need a cdc suite in order to do that two little hard points i feel on the mech anyways I think for now we're leaving um, that be. That's already five minutes of just lamenting over the Vulcan. This guy here has better hard points, but potentially the whole CD, uh, CDC suite is almost wasted with it. Can I build something meaningful out of this guy? So he has way less support guns and instead it would be four medium lasers and potentially some heat sinks. How much is a medium laser here? Medium laser is unavailable. Fantastic. Well, that concludes our exploration. What potentially could be possible. Got two medium lasers for the fire starter, and that's about it. Let's repair the fire starter, and that already takes 25 days. Okay, sorry for testing uh, that, but I hope uh, there was an element of wisdom or learning in it the idea with uh, setting up most of uh, these uh, mech setups is really to create kind of that sweet spot where you're really make uh, having a solid continuous damage output proper heat management but at the same time almost full armor 
to make sure that you can withstand whatever the enemy is throwing at you. On the lower max, typically. I've got the financial report. Okay, fantastic. We have a steady increase of morale. Uh, let's take the extravagant lifestyle, although it is costly, but increase in morale is definitely worth it. So in terms of ship upgrades, drive system still needs structure repairs. So that's exactly what we're going to do next. I was just mentioning the small mech still have uh, the inherent disadvantage to not have enough load to really allow for, for instance, long-ranged uh, missiles. Later mechs um, from the heavy category onwards or heavier medium mechs can make decent missile boats. So that's another kind of way of playing uh, the game. I'm not a big fan of loadouts like the one that you've seen with a Panther, where essentially you do have a sniper with only one PPC and just a few more rockets, and that's all they can do. Whilst it is nice to see that they can hit, and the PPC itself has a nice side effect of jamming the sensors, really it doesn't contribute a whole lot in uh, the actual fights. It's 40 or 50 damage, um, and since you can only field four mechs in a lance, keep in mind that there are opportunity costs you could instead just have a mech that is dealing more damage so that there is not even that there is not even a retaliation happening. Good, we're upgrading our ship further. Now, finally, the drive system. That's important because we're increasing our movement speed by 20%. Good, crew's ready for the next ship, uh, for the next uh, gig. And we are traveling to our destination system. Fantastic. I want to have that rare mech. That is the Raven, and the Raven is a fantastic mech. Before we're doing that, though, let's just double check the hiring hall real quick. What can I do for you? Orders? Yeah. Standing by. Relatively high monthly I salaries. And in terms of other contact, uh, contracts, we're down to a million, so we need quite a bit of funds now. Specifically, since I'm, uh, I've decided to go for the extravagant lifestyle, so that our morale is moving all the way up to 50. We got a few, but holy moly, this system here with three skulls might be a bit more than we can stomach. But if we could stomach it... 28 salvage that would be awesome got another 24 salvage these are massive salvage missions capture a base and a straight up battle. we're going to look into it but before we're doing that let's go to the actual to the actual flashpoint flashpoints i mentioned that earlier are just helping uh, you to do multiple missions in a row and uh, you get a reward at the end this time it would be the raven so let's jump right into the flashpoint the nice part about the flashpoint is also you can typically make decisions but uh, that's more on the later missions for now you're typically starting with a mission and then either in the second or third mission you can make decisions and what i mean with that is you can oftentimes uh, decide to either completely withdraw uh, turn on your employer or uh, maybe go in and and uh, resolve the conflict uh, but get an extra objective that uh, gives you some more loot or a, di a more difficult task so the decisions really matter. In terms of money, I would like to fill up our bank a bit. 
So the almost 1 million credits are well taken. Maximum of 55 tons and a maximum of 200 tons that we can field. That's why it's called a light uh, mech mission. And Tygen sits back while Hogbite and Bradford, together with Lily and Mox, are going to do the mission. That's our standard team for now. And I think with the reworked Blackjack and the reworked Vindicator, we might see just a bit more firepower. We got an urban battle environment. That is fantastic for what we're trying to field. So let's jump right into the mix. Time to jump into the mission. One and a half star mission, or one and a half school mission. And this here is going to be a fun mission. The Flashpoint missions are typically pretty static. So this one here is a mission where we're fighting two versus two. So we got another Lance with us. The Leo team here is going to support us. Let's take a look uh, what they were fielding. They got a spider, a trebuchet, which is a fantastic mech, a griffin, which is also a fantastic mech, and a javelin. So both of the medium-sized uh, mechs are good. I like them. What we're going to do is we're going to leave them On my through way. and let them take Hi, the front line in the hopes of them becoming the main targets. That means less damage on our mechs. And we're still going to be successful, of course. They are using the spider to check out the enemy. I like this position here and this position that's all forest. And forest means less damage. But less damage is good. Roger. Uh huh. All right, Mox, Mox moves over here. Position confirmed. Enemy charge, um, our allies are charging in. And you can see the first unknown mix on the horizon. And there are more Reinforcements coming. Everybody wants that new mech, so welcome to the party. Another Lance is landing. And this is where it is going to become ugly, guys. Because now it is a free for all. We gotta help our friends. Standing by. Of course, we're going to do that whilst delaying. I'll commentate a bit what they are doing. Spider attacks the Locust. Locust is such a bad mech. I really don't like it. It's difficult to make that one work. So the moment that lo a Locust takes damage, it's normally game over. Not the worst idea to attack it in melee. Still has a bit of evasion blips, but Eventually, we're going to maybe focus it and get it down. Fire starter here, that is dangerous, so it's one of the main targets. For obvious reasons, you can already see how it jumped in and just increased the heat of uh, the frontliner. And make no mistake, we are very likely going to see someone who's going to die. Good, fantastic. So let's start here. Move on out. Mox moves out. And let's I just can. take a shot at that building. Because, to be honest, that is some fake cover. And what I mean with fake cover is... You could easily hit it. Order. And then there's nothing left. Unfortunately, we have positioned ourselves 
quite a bit Waiting for orders. to the back here. Oh, that would be dangerous. Let's stick stick with this jump here for now. If I start, I moves up. Got it. Takes two shots. Downs the building. And with that, all down, of a sudden, Commander. the landscape changes a lot. You can see the Locust and the Firestarter are being caught with their pants down. I want to be careful with them landing here. One thing that I can already do is starting to prep these buildings. Locking on target. And what I mean what I mean with that is just getting them so low that if someone jumps up it's super easy to get uh, to get them down. Okay. Hawkbite moves up. The 25% really uh, doesn't sound like a good idea. Continuing to really get that one down. Buildings are prepped. It's not seldom that you see that they will jump up. And that's what I, I'm sort of counting on. This is a Steiner lens. Uh, remember, Steiner was the faction that we wanted to also ally, the one that really didn't have uh, their own solar systems here. And now you can see the Steiner faction is fighting against the Leo faction, is fighting against uh, the ones that, um, that are helping us. By the way, that was a mistake. The spider is left with zero evasion blips. So I am somewhat expecting the guy to go down. Lily, on the other hand, has plenty of evasion blips. We're going to be fine. The enemy dropped the commando, a javelin and a spider. Who would have thought that they are taking the high ground here, right? Unbelievable. I'm just being on reserve, letting them take their turn for now. Potentially a second one of them might even jump up the building. Good. It's likely that the Javelin and the Spider will be their main targets, and that's fine. Yeah, without Evasion Blips, the Spider here will take a lot of damage. That's a nice free for all. Finally, some action. Commando moves in and entrenches right next to the building. That's interesting. Potentially didn't have jump jets, elsewise I guess he would have jumped up. Alright, the fire starter begins to deal with the spider. That's interesting. Those two lances are now fighting against one another. <laughs> Fantastic. But we're sticking on reserve. I'll let our allies take the turn first and then we'll clean up. Wow, that was a fantastic hit. And that's, ladies and gentlemen, why you shouldn't put ammunition in your central torso. It's just a really bad idea. That was the trebuchet. Uh, trebuchet is one of those heavier medium mechs that I was talking about, which is a good missile boat. Ready for orders. Good. Mox. 
moves over. Moving to position. And guess what? There's a hit. Unsteady structure, falling damage, 80 points of damage. That's exactly what I was looking for. Fantastic. Hogbite moves over. And I think we're going to uh, use a precision strike here. Let's try to hit the leg and get this guy down. Good. Right leg is down. There are a couple more buildings in the way. Not an optimal start. Acknowledged. But we we'll, we'll take what we can get. See, and this here, the new setup with all of the medium lasers. That's a good one. Engaging. Yeah, it melts through the light mech. Deals a lot of damage. I like it. Gotta be careful here. Don't want to be the centerpiece of them taking shots, though. Down here is bad because these uh, tanks can explode. I would love to stand in the runes. It's maybe not the worst place to be by thinking about it. We will be able to act relatively fast. And we still got two evasion blips, so that's fine. Turn the flame off and uh -huh. let's go to town. Want some more, huh? Good. Lily might need to just jump out. In the meantime, this commando here takes a severe beating from all sides. That's perfect. Absolutely fantastic. We're just standing kind of in the second uh, second line and are cleaning up. We're not even taking damage at this point. Steiner now has a difficult decision to make. And they decide to actually take a shot at us, not move at all. Well, that was a mistake, my friend. Waiting on you, Commander. That was a mistake, my friend. I think we'll leave the fire starter where it is for now. This one here is what I was looking for. No problem. Not the perfect angle, but a decent one. All right. Unfortunately, didn't hit it. But we still got soft cover here. Wow, that spider is still going in. And it's always melee attacking. Fantastic, I like it.
That's potentially the MVP of this fight. Drew a lot of aggro from the uh, from the get-go. Still standing. And now they are teaming up on this locust. <laughs> Oh no, wait, 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 wait. They are teaming up on the spider. The locust and the fire starter are both Leo for forces. Okay, even more that the spider is tanking. Careful, they're looping around back. Lost the jump jet there. That was Good to go. foreseeable. Moving further back. That indeed was foreseeable. Affirmative. Could have been a bit more careful with Lily. Losing uh, that uh, one jump jet is not the end of the world, but we should be careful not to lose more. Wow, and their medium makes mean business like their griffin and trebuchet are actually rocking it Good. We do not have uh, enough resolve to hit the spider over here. Instead, I think what we will do is we'll deal with both of these clowns. Nikita moves a tiny bit back and this here should be good to go. High sustained damage. Thanks to many, many, many medium lasers. And our colleagues are cleaning house. Holy shit. That was good. Hawkbite moves in. And let's get this javelin. Oh yeah, the shotgun. I'm telling you guys, 80 damage. 10 times 8. Reinforcements are about to arrive. The spider is still going strong. Look at this guy. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it's now overheating. Let's see if the other spider is going to take advantage of it. That's the last of Steiner's forces. It's jumping in, trying to hit Hogbite, but yeah, not, not gonna happen. Commander? Good, we're moving up. I don't like the spider, but I also don't like the fire starter, so we're going to start with the latter one. Sensors impaired, structure open. Yeah, and they seem to focus the fire starter as well, which is a smart move, by the way. Waiting for orders. Our fire starter jumps in. And let's give him hell. Are 
critical hit, Commander. Right, also completely destroyed. So I'd be surprised if the Firestarter actually survives that round. No problem. On my way. Vindicator moves in. Now let's not precision strike. We're keeping that for the spider. Engaging with target. He's almost down. Too much sustained damage. Holy shit. He got what he deserved. Good. Hogbite moves back. Let's get rid of one laser. And... We're hitting the core. Spider is now reduced to initiative ranking 3. And another Steiner Force just appears out of nowhere. Was that the Spider? Oh my gosh, this is a hardcore pilot. I wish I could hire that guy like he's overheating but he has the balls to just not give a shit he runs over and hits this guy for more damage he moves in with complete and utter disregard of his own life Good. At the same time, Spider has taken so many hits that it's now falling over. That's minus one initiative again. And yeah, the pilot gave up. Bandit. Good. Here we go. Another round. Mox, who wants to stay behind, is doing exactly that. Moving to the back. Waiting for orders. Lily is sprinting up. Moving fast. Let's cool down a bit. Fantastic. Good. We'll let our friends take the first step here. And I secretly hope that the spider pilot will survive it. But the way that the AI typically works is that the spider pilot will continue to just charge in. Oh, an Irby, an urban mech. Got something you want well, done? if they field urban mechs, then the objective Roger. can't be that interesting for them. That's the meme mech. Has one massive gun, and that's about it. Not a lot of armor, not a lot of, not a lot of anything, really. Good, we're letting the enemies go first. Oh, word, that spider uh, still <laughs> continues in the fight, and he even has sensor lock. That's such a good pilot, damn it. I like it. He has character. What's his call sign? Ombra. Good job, man. Holding action, Commander. You get my vote for being the MVP of uh, this entire fight. Alright, somehow they think that the urban mech is... The real threat here. Not sure here why they would think that, but okay. I prefer to focus on the Shadowhawk, which I think is going to be the more dangerous enemy. Oh, 
Yeah, I'm not making the mistake to go to close because the AC-10 that the Irby is having, uh, that the Irby is loading might be dangerous, so... Waiting for orders. Bradford moves around over here. Takes a shot, 85%. Confirmed. Lots and lots of medium lasers. And although the Shadowhawk is entrenched, it takes a bit of damage. You know what? I do have an idea. Hawkbite moves up. Vigilance, that way he has the same defensive bonus. And we're continuing to fire on the Shadowhawk. Good to go. Engaging jump jet. Lily moves in. Right, Commander. And two more hits. That's good. The spider really move up. Oh yeah, he Ombra is still in the battle. Yeah. Good. Mox moves up. And let's continue with making this guy's life a living nightmare. If we could loot the Shadowhawk, that would be good. I really like them. Fantastic mech. I think we went for money. So never mind. Alright. Hawkbite moves back. And finally, that guy takes a lot of damage. It's already down to initiative rating 2. Which means we got a full turn to still up, hurt it. Very bad. Bradford moves up. Acknowledged. And the Shadowhawk takes even more damage. It's now almost down. Yeah, let's just delay her. I like her five evasion blips. And if the Shadowhawk tries to stabilize and shoot, the Griffin and the Javelin here are good targets. He's almost falling over, so... Yeah, really, the only thing that he could do was Commander? entrench himself. Moving up. And it has five more hit points on the torso. Which means it's almost dead. Good. Omibra, the MVP, is now on the rooftop here. Speaking about just going and going and going. He's still alive. That's good. Waiting for orders. Trying 
trying to hit the urban mech. That hit something good. Oh boy, the, the Shadow Oak's still standing. <laughs> Alright, that's going to be fun. Fire starter kicks in, precision shot to reduce his initiative a bit further. And let's just try to kill it. That's a kill. Good, the precision shot was just in case if we were if we would be missing. And finally Hogbite moves up. I'm happy with our heat management on our medium max. Very decent. Mission successful. And we got the first mission of the Flashpoint done. That is by far one of the most fun missions of the entire Flashpoint. Unfortunately, it will become a bit more difficult from now on, but I'm confident that we can do it. I still want that Raven. So, 900,000. Lost single jump threat. That is okay. Given that we got like a million worth of credit back. And we killed 10 enemy mechs, so that should be a lot of experience. I'm not sure if the experience will be reduced just because there's a different uh, second lance but typically you get experience just based on the amount of uh, the difficulty of the mission so i would guess not good perfect Lucian here is a bit pissed because um, we gave him a good run for his money. And by the way, Ombra here, that is the guy who was steering the spider. Fantastic. Never really looked up his ma name. It's not a, a guy, it's actually a girl. Genevieve Ombra. Good. It would be fantastic if we could recruit her, but I think that that is not going to work, right? No. Would be too good. She impressed me. But yeah, the next one is a an ambush for a, for a convoy. I'm going to do that the next time. For now, I think we're good to go. We got two millions in cash back. And the last thing before we end today's mission is, let's check for experience. Waiting on you, Commander. Good to go. Standing by. Order. Looks as if we cannot upgrade anyone. Okay, fair enough. That brings us really to the end of uh, today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed uh, the content, feel free to give it a like and a comment down below. We're going to continue the Flashpoint the next time, so stay tuned and see you in two days. Bye-bye.